What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell, and I'm making a quick commercial here for SeerCustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxana. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Well, hello everybody around the world, wherever you might be. I am your trusty podcast host, Jay Campbell, and you are listening to the Jay Campbell podcast. And today I have a very, very special guest, a guy who I literally just met today uh, virtually uh, through our, uh, uh, not Zoom, but StreamYard studio, but a guy who's essentially been a legend from folks that I actually gained mentorship from, and that person is Dave Lee. Dave, how are you, brother? Doing well, brother. How are you? It's awesome to have you. And by the way, Dave has the best beard of any person who's ever been on the Jay Campbell podcast. And that's saying a lot because this podcast has been going since the end of 2014, which is pretty awesome itself. But man, honestly, dude, it's an honor to have you here today. So let me give you guys his bio. He's a holistic health coach. He specializes in men's hormone optimization therapy. He's also a Paul Check practitioner. And all you guys know that Paul is loved and uh, lauded by the Jay Campbell listening audience. So, you know, I know this is going to be really profound today. He just had me share... Uh, an interesting story about something that happened and impacted my life in the last two days, which is actually, you know, kind of mind blowing. And really another example of how like you can be at the top of Mount Everest and at the bottom of the ocean in a matter of a nano blip if you don't watch your six. So Dave, you know, truth be told, we're going to go deep, but let me just kind of get a bit, a little bit of a background on you. So the listening audience knows who you are. I think they can already tell that you're Aussie, you know, you've got that deep, deep accent. Um, you got the best beard going. Talk a little bit about who you are. Sure, man. So my background, uh, marketing, music, uh, I went through a quite a serious medical condition when I was in my mid twenties. Um, I may look 40, but I'm actually only 28. So it wasn't that long ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, that led me through a big spiritual awakening, a big health awakening, uh, you know, looking back in retrospect, it was my rite of passage. It was my trial by fire from the universe. Um, and that is what led me ultimately to spending a couple of years on my knees uh, in rehabilitation for a pretty serious injury, uh, exploring uh, the realms of plant medicine, but also being introduced through desperation, I guess, to hormone replacement therapy, um, peptide therapy, uh, Paul Check as a practitioner in healing. Um, and then that took me down the rabbit hole, which I'm sure you're very well aware of, of, of the rabbit hole in this realm of <laughs> neuropsychiatry and my particular interest that's a bit different from other people in the space is I'm, I was more interested in how hormones affect the brain and mental health as opposed to training and performance and, and such. So I've been practicing now working with guys as a health coach full time for the last year. Uh, but before that I was teaching mindfulness and meditation as well. Um, so yeah, big, broad spectrum background. And now I'm working with men to improve their physical health and then their spiritual health through, through the plant medicines as well. 
Bro, did you really? Are you BSing me? Are you really only 28? I'm 28 years old. About to turn 29. Fuck, dude, you have an ancient soul. I mean, obviously, you already know that. I mean, I get that a lot. Yeah. You're 28 in this incarnation, but I mean, mm -hmm. come on. I mean, like your presence. I mean, dude, that is mind blowing. I mean, you know, you don't look old, but your presence, which is everything, is like ancient sage, like your warrior sage. By the way, how yes. tall are you? Uh, six foot one. Uh, but my girlfriend says I'm a thousand years old. So, <laughs> oh, oh, you're like me. You're many thousands of years old. Who knows? You know, yeah. and and that's in the human realm aspect of things. Um, like, what do you what do you weigh? Like two twenty, two fifteen? Uh, hundred and five kilos. So, yeah. So you're like two twelve, two twelve. Yeah, Dude, we're yeah. literally the exact fucking same. Yeah, Neanderthal genetics. Dude, I tell Joel when I had my twenty three and me done i was literally mind blown i you know sent it back you know dr anthony j you know the mayo clinic guy when we did some webinars together he was like freaked out too he's like bro i've never seen this before you have almost six percent neanderthal yeah I've got I'm body. Like, yeah so it's yeah. like well, you know when you when people like you and i say that to people we're like what does that really mean i'm just like well don't ever get into a fight with us so you don't find out <laughs> yeah yeah we found like a <laughs> I mean, no, it's true. Cause like, I remember telling Joel that and he was like, dude, you and Dave Lee are going to, you're going to, this is going to be nuts, but it's true. Like our bone structure is heavier than a normal sapien sapiens. And that's again, because Neanderthalus was like these, you know, giant, they were like a, a mix of Cro-Magnon and Denisovian, right? Mm -hmm. Like Neanderthal was like the next level, but yeah, dude, just really, really heavy bone structure. But I remember reading that and I was like, is this a mistake? Cause the average human DNA is 3.2% Neanderthals and we're double, yeah. which is like really strange. But again, everything's hidden from us and we're going to get into that in the podcast. I mean, what does that really mean? But obviously you're very smart. You have a very advanced consciousness. You have that presence about you. Let's talk about right now, the world and how fucked up it is. Um, you know, without even talking about 2020, you and I both know that endocrine systems are decimated. Human beings are living in the most contaminated, uh, you know, environment since probably before Atlantis, right? Like it's so bad that you can't as a man and a woman, you know, we'll talk about both. You really can't live optimally, you know, at a level 10 life, unless you're extremely proactive, Right. And we'll talk about those proactive means in this point, but like, just give me your take on, you know, how difficult is it right now as it, cause you're a young guy, you're only 28. I mean, fuck, I'm literally in this incarnation right now, still 22 years ahead of you, which is mind blowing. But um, what does it even mean, right? For a young guy right now, you know, who is being annihilated and a lot of guys, as you know, a lot of these guys don't even have the self-awareness of what's happening to them because they're fucking playing video games and eating shitty food. But like, what is really happening right now to like young men all over the globe due to the environmental contamination? Physical and psychological assault. I think, I think the, the big thing that I see from, you know, looking into this in terms of the brain is that I think a lot of people's mental health and consciousness is reacting to the diseased vessel. I think that the body has become so poisoned from endocrine disruptive chemicals, diet, lifestyle, everything else that's going on in that realm. Um, and then the consciousness is reacting to it and becoming quite sick because the body is so sick that it's yeah. sending these signals and it's going, this is wrong, this is wrong, I'm not doing well. And so what I'm seeing with the with the younger guys I work with, you know, um, you know, early twenties, even early thirties, is these guys are doing like everything right like we're talking like biohacking lords like they are ticking every box and then boxes that we would never even bother ticking as well and the thing for me that is you know in, in terms of getting into the trt stuff is you know they're coming back with like and they're doing everything right and total t for like a 22 23 year old is like 300 350 um you know and i think total t is a good measure for just how much the body can actually produce um but then you look at the luteinizing hormone level and it's mid range. So the body is going, I'm good. Like this is a good amount of testosterone for me to be making. So it's, it's like the, the, the young male has become so diseased and sick and damaged that it's just become accepted by the body. The body's not even fighting it anymore. Um, and it's, it's, it's heartbreaking to see because these younger guys are, they're so lost 
Um, they don't have that masculine identity. They don't have a masculine male, rail, uh, male role model. They, they don't know what to be doing with themselves. And they're just rolling over and accepting it because they feel like the fight is lost or they don't even know how to fight back. Well, that's, I mean, it's, it's awesome that you have such profound, you know, wisdom. Again, you're warrior sage mm -hmm. and you're still really like one of those guys. You have a lot of these young guys. I can't even imagine like comparing you to like an average 25 or 26 year old kid. I mean, I, dude, I, you're right. I mean, everything you said, I, I, I really empathize because they don't know. And you're right. The internet for the guys that are proactive, which I'm sure you work with a lot of these guys are, they, they, they do more than the, you know, way more than guys in my age generation and 10 times more than the baby boomers. Oh yeah. And they are at a disadvantage from the beginning. I mean, bro, let's get deeper now. So you and your generation literally came from women who are on the pill. So you and, you know, other men, you know, your generation and younger literally were contaminated at birth. You were literally already, you know, all this phytoestrogen, all these mm -hmm. chemicals from these God awful toxins that they gave women, which was obviously a form of, uh, what would you call it? Um, you know, uh, population control even then, right. Yes. They just mastered it now, but like all of these men, there's, you know, science, real peer review stuff out there that shows um, now that men have weakened bone structures, uh, more estrogen, not more estrogen, but more estrogenic body fat, higher levels of insulin resistance. I mean, it's insane how stacked the deck is against men who were born in the last 30 years. Yeah. What do you tell a guy? Cause as you know, a young man today who is proactive and smart and listens to a Dave Lee or, you know, luckily if I'm blessed, Jay Campbell, you know, they know what to do, but how many doctors are going to actually write them a script for therapeutic testosterone? Few, you know, we know they can give them clomiphene and HCG and all these other things, whatever adjuvants, but ultimately at the end of the day, we both know that none of those things enhance dopamine like therapeutic testosterone does. They're really a bridge to get the therapeutic testosterone. So like, what do you even say? Like, what is your, you know, what, I mean, you recommend that these guys like start going down a gray market path because it's literally the only legitimate means for them to overcome the obvious, you know, hindrances in the environment. Whatever means necessary. Absolutely. Um, I'm working on my book at the moment and I'm really advocating that men under the age of 30 do pursue testosterone optimization therapy particularly when mental health and physical health is being compromised. I think that, you know, if if, if you can find a doctor who will write the script, then right. obviously that's the best option, you know, 100%. But right. I think that at the stage that these guys are at, it needs to be obtained by one means or another. And fortunately, you know, back when I was, you know, I started at 24. Um, sure. and luckily, your first book was out, um, right. the, the, the short version. I had the yeah. audible, audible version. Um, and that was a lifesaver for me because, you know, at that time there was only one doctor in Australia who was prescribing it. You'd get like a, wow. a 250 milligram per fortnight preloaded syringe to go <laughs> and forth with a couple of milligrams of Rimadex a week and then a 1500 IU shot of HCG every Saturday. So it was, it was without your book, we would have been fucked over there. Um, Damn. so it's, yeah, it, it's something that they I'm really pushing them to pursue because, Unfortunately, a lot of these guys, they go to their doctor, and, and you know this full well, the doctor looks at their symptoms, they don't run blood work, or if they do run blood work, they go, yeah, you're fine, you're within the range. And then they just whack them full of psychiatric drugs. And then by the time they come to me, they've been on these psychiatric drugs during the formative years of their brain, and some of them don't even go through a complete puberty because their endocrine system is just so fucked, and then these SSRIs make it worse. And then, you know, luckily we can unfuck them by using testosterone therapeutically and sticking at it. But it's a it's a sad state for these younger guys because they they have to seek this information out themselves. And you know, I give huge props to the guys who do it. And I always ask them, I'm like, what brought like what brought you here? Um, because it's always interesting to hear the story. But you know, the, the guys who are seeking it out and finding it, they are the ones who are getting better and recovering and they they get their twenties back, and that's that's the most beautiful thing you can give to these guys is they get their they get their twenties. Dude, you're you are so wise beyond your years. Um, okay, so let me ask you. You know, we're gonna go off a tangent now because this is Jay Campbell and Dave Lee. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, we have talking points. I always have talking points with my guests, but I, you know, you're obviously brave and courageous enough to talk off the record, you know. Oh, I, yeah. So, so in truth, dude, where are we going? Like how much longer, because obviously, you know, we're not talking about it, but Australia, you guys are even locked out right now. Again, I was just reading some shit this morning. Like, 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 oh, bro, like oh, I, oh. I, left, I left the country. Fuck that. Oh, That's you're just- out of Australia. Okay. Where are you now? <laughs> I'm in Lithuania. I'm in Eastern Europe. That that country's a stinking shit. Right, well, man, but you're still you're you're still highly qualified to talk about Australia. So, oh, in the bigger picture, hmm. how much longer? And I know this is just two fucking optimized, spiritually enhanced, and aware dudes, you know, bullshitting on a podcast. But how much longer do we really have from a free world, civilized society standpoint before we are in a fucking Hollywood dystopian movie. I mean, and I know this is an opinion question, but like how long do we really have, bro? I think it's already begun. Uh, yeah, it it has been the, time, but how it's, long it's, do you think we have? Give me a timeline. Maybe two years. Um, there you because go. In, in Australia, I mean, I, I kind of thought it would happen sooner. I'm surprised that it's lasted this long, but when you've got a country that has a lot of uh, convict uh, blood in it in terms of people who had been imprisoned and locked up previously, it's not surprising right. that people have kind of uh, been a bit more controlled and subservient with these laws. But I really feel like rioting will be the next step for Australia. I really feel like um, – because what's happening in Australia, for those who aren't aware, is that – they're just snapping people into lockdowns as soon as we get one case. Like one case and then boom, the whole state locks up. You can't leave the house. No notice. You're, you're locked inside. And you you know this. You can only play that card so many times before right. people go, nah, I've had right. enough. And right. I mean, I had enough, so I left. Um, and the How hard was it for you to get out, though? Did they make it difficult for you to get out? Did you have to pull some strings and pay some people off to get out and actually stay out? Or you know, was it easy? I mean, I'm interested in that. I had to leave and say, I'm not coming back. That's how you can get out. So you can absolutely get out if you say that you're not coming back. Um, but if I wanted to get back into Australia right now, I mean, no, I'd have to wait probably at least a year. And Jeez. then fuck and you're a goddamn citizen. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, let's go deeper because right now in America, whatever this prison is, because obviously, as you and I both know, and you know, Joel and I always talk about this, America is not what people have been told it is right. It's a giant false dichotomy. I mean, we now know, and this is all provable, measurable, you know, there's books written on this, the, the, and again, this is going to piss off a lot of my, you know, God loving, you know, America, uh, yeah, you know, audience, but the, the declaration of independence provably discernibly conclusively was written by the Vatican under the control, not the control, but under the auspices of the King of England. The United States was never a free country. It has always been a part of the crown, right? Mm -hmm. We know that the Vatican, London, and DC, DC is the military control of the Jesuits. London is the financial center and the Vatican is the religious quote unquote, not spiritual by any stretch, but that's what they brainwash people of the world. So, you know, the Jesuits under the control of the Vatican control the world and that's everywhere, right? You know, this whole new world order, you know, Zionists, Jesuits, uh, you know, eugenicists, the Bill Gates, these people, they're all under the control of the Vatican. That's how the world runs. It's very simple. It's discernible. It's provable now. So everything that U S citizens have ever been led to believe is a lie. Everything. There has never been freedom. It was always a corporation. It was always run by the banking institutions. That's why like you and I know that if you had money, you could always get out of criminal justice. The people without money go to prison, get raped, screwed, demons infested, whatever. But if you have money, means, or resources or access, or you happen to be one of the Illuminati families, whoever they may or may not be, you you know don't run, or you're not under the governance of the same rules and regulations. So that dude. Right now, I said all that, you know, with the statement of where I want to go with it is that no one can fly into the United States right now either, bro. Like Mm -hmm. you can't fly into the United States right now. Now you can come into the United States if you're fully vaccinated Mm -hmm. and you first go to another country like Mexico or Canada and spend 14 days there. And, And, you know, whatever happens there is what happens there. Then you could come in and then, you know, you're still subject to the scrutiny of coming into the United States as a non U S citizen. And then for U.S. citizens, and this is 
as of today, because I'm really into looking at this because I pay attention, I cannot fly anywhere in the world but three places. I can fly into Mexico. I can fly into the Dominican Republic and I can fly into Costa Rica. Now I still have to have my DNA cataloged and jammed up my nose and injected whatever the fuck they're injecting, whether it's nanobots, nanoparticles, whatever. But other than that, bro, I can't go anywhere. So this is happening in real time. And how many people actually know about this? Now, again, if you're a fully vaccinated American citizen, sure, you can fly into a fully vaccinated EU country. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're not, and you're obviously guys like us, we're never going to do anything like that kind of nonsense. Um, we're constrained. So I think you're right. I think, and again, this is negative. It's not negative. It's just real, right? Real talk. Two years is probably right. I tell my wife every single morning when I wake up and we do our morning ritual practice, I say, I love you. Be grateful that there's still society. There's still not a dystopia. We still have a pool in our backyard and a spa and an infrared sauna. And we can do these things and hang out with our dogs and, you know, not have to hide from fucking, you know, horrible fucking zombies or whatever may be, may or may not be coming in this dystopian world. So it's like, at least we're grateful, but I'm glad that you said two years. Cause I really think that that is probably it's two to four. Yeah. And you know, if two is the, 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 the minimum and four is the maximum, we both know that in two, it's going to be a different reality than it is now. Bro. Yeah. 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 And so at what point do we go, okay, this has become dystopia because it's just going to gradually shift and go down the shitter. And at what point do we decide that it's fucked? And it, I mean, it's already pretty fucking bad. So, um, so that's my question for you then right there at that point, does the bifurcation happen? Do people like us build separate alternative systems, banks, infrastructure, or is it so dystopian and so apocalyptic that we're literally just living on farms together with machine guns, you know, foraging i mean what do you where do you think it goes i get an opinion question the second one sounds more appealing to me um, <laughs> and i know people who are already gearing up to do that back in australia like people who are properly kidding up they've got property they've got weapon training they're ready to go and they're already making it happen um so and i mean i i picked the country with my favorite nature so that i can gear up to do that if need be so i think it's good i, I think that's what it could go to i, I think you know, at, at what point do we put our foot down and go, this society is not livable anymore? Right, um, right. And for me, that that point in Australia was when you could turn on the 6 p.m. news, the premier of the state was on there, and he said, as of tomorrow, you can't leave your house for two weeks. Right. And I was like, right. no, that's not on. Exactly. Um, and I was like, if I stay here, I'm going to get arrested because I'm I'm not bending the knee. I'm right. not doing it. Right. Um, right. And the, the thing for me that made it unlivable was – um, and I'm not sure how it is in the States, but in Australia, it was it was so heavily citizen policed. Oh, they control us through the Internet. They control us through the television. They control us through food. They control us through the microwave. They control us through harp. There are harp arrays on every fucking continent. Half mm -hmm. of them are buried under the ground. Some of them are in the ocean, but it's all mind control. People like us, which we're good about to get to, take testosterone. Mm -hmm. We take plant medicine. We take psychedelics. We take things that detune their programming mm. so that we are immune to it. But if you're a normal, you know, everyday sheeple person who just literally plugs in, goes along to get along, they just, you're just a fucking, you're just constantly entrained. You're like a, 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 a what do you call it? A, a test dummy. Yep. Ding okay. dong, ding dong, ding dong. Which way do I go today? I mean, that's what they are. So thankfully there's more of us now um, than there were, you know, because you know, drugs and uh, psychedelics and plant medicine has become, you know, more accepted, you know, slash ubiquitous if you're willing to reach out and take a chance. But mm. let's shift to plant medicine for a second right now, because I think you're the guy to talk about this. Um, mm. I did a podcast earlier today with Sean McCormick, who has the Optimal Living podcast. He's an, also a great brother that I will connect you with, who's one of us who lives up in the wilderness in seattle and moved his family he's literally essentially living on a farm he's ready yeah. and you know we were talking about like you know the same shit you know i i didn't go as deep with him as i did with you because i don't want to like have that conversation um you know that i have to edit the podcast like i did with paul because i know that me and you are going to just speak it if it gets deleted we're like fuck it yeah but you know in reality um 
plant medicine and testosterone optimization creates a like how would I say it like a pre a, a, a prefrontal cortex that is hyper vigilant and hyper aware and I don't mean hyper vigilant like you know you're living in survival I mean you are not prone to conditioning yep. you are I would argue and I want your opinion is you are immune to their bullshit they their psychotronic attacks which come from everywhere have literally no power over us you and I can watch television and enjoy whatever it is that we're watching and not be entrained or in tuned or not fearful. You know, again, as you know, that's how they control really the masses is through fear, yeah. but it's interesting. And I'm glad I'm having this conversation with you because not a lot of people talk about this. Um, there are some of us that cannot be programmed, bro. We are not capable of their programming. And I've always questioned you know, my reality of like, what is the separator? And I have found over time, speaking to high level folks like yourself, that we all share these common precepts. We're spiritually optimized. I mean, we're physically optimized, which allows for the spiritual downloads. And then all of us are open to using psychedelics, ergogens, going on shamanic experiences. So all of these things literally detune the programming that, you know, the hypnotic frequency is what I call the human central computer and attune us to what is, which is so much more than the matrix programming. But your thoughts on that? I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I think it's like the perfect storm of um, a bunch of factors that contribute. Um, I think that there, there has to be some kind of certain like neurochemical foundation that people like you and I have, like right. whether it's something like the warrior gene, which is like uh, high activity of comps so that the prefrontal cortex can handle high levels of dopamine without, you know, freezing out and freaking out. Right. Um, right. I think that might be a factor. I mean, for me, uh, my, the first CD I ever got when I was five years old was a Green Day album. So I've been into punk yeah. rock. So I've been predisposed to, to putting the middle finger up to things since I was a child. Um, but I, I think having a DMT based experience of some sort is very important. And whether you get that through, uh, you know, a near death experience or through something like ayahuasca or through, you know, regular DMT or however you do it, I think having that kind of activation in the brain opens new pathways and connects things in a way that makes you look at a world that. It's kind of like once you've gone down that road and if you're set up the way that people like us are set up, it's kind of like you don't have a choice. It's kind of like you're you're, you're pulled out and you kind of you can't even if you wanted to go back in, you can't. Um, right. And it's right. it's for me, it was I, I was looking for that. So I was fortunate that it didn't hit me hard. Like I, I did my first ayahuasca ceremony the day I finished rehab for my head injury. And it was the most beautiful experience I've had in my whole life. But I had two near-death experiences before that where I entered the, the, the DMT realm. So I'd been there before. Sure. Um, but once you've kind of had that experience, once you've connected in with that realm and that space, and once you become aware of who you are and your lineage of ancestry, it's kind of like you, you can't go back to the, the beep and boop and, and the nine to five and walking <laughs> through the world anymore. It's like, it's, it's that you've got, you've got to go deeper because otherwise nothing makes sense. You're kind of in this limbo. So it's like, you've got this choice. It's do I stay lost in this world that makes no sense or do I go deeper into this new path I found? And I think some people who are afraid can stay lost and then they can develop all kinds of issues around that. But I think people like us go, well, where does this go? And then we go deeper. Beautiful. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the Optimized Tribe with U.S. Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light.
And so it's like when you can get yourself to a place that you are not afraid of living, then that's when everything drops. That's when everything, you know, that's when people like you and me can actually penetrate in a conversation with a normal person and they can hear us because I know that, you know, this is two guys that are really advanced having this conversation and it's probably not my audience for the most part, but a lot of people, it goes over the head because they're still in fear and they have no idea what we're fucking talking about. Because when you're limited to fear, you can't respond out of love. You can't feel that resonant frequency of love because you're just ensconced and entrained in fear. Everything you do is fear, bro. Everything you do is survival programming. You don't do a single fucking thing every day without thinking about like, well, if I don't do this, something negative happens.